Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is my street legal CT70 clone. That last video was a little bit long. The electrical system on this is completely new to me, so I wanted to give it to you raw, just in case you're up against something similar yourself. Today, we're going to fix this mean lean, and we're going to raise the front fender for a more classic look. I'm using the rack as a standoff to prop the bike up against my workbench. Looks like I'm a little high. I'll compress the suspension a little bit here. There we go. I'm under the lip. It's pushing up against it. And unless I really started yanking on things, it's pretty much not going to go anywhere. I have my 10 millimeter socket. I crawl underneath and I'm going to remove those four bolts that are holding the foot peg bracket on. The kickstand's included. This modification. It's going to be a whole lot easier up on the workbench. Mostly because of that guy right there. The kickstand springs have a bit of torsion on them and it's really not going to be easy yanking on it when it's still attached to the mini bike. We're going to be using a 10 inch Z50R Monkey kickstand all right that will match up with these foot pegs because well these are originally for a z50r or one of the z50 monkey bikes i think it says mini trail so that'd be like a mini trail 50 it's all the same thing i'm going to Remove that bolt, take the tension off of the spring by dropping the kickstand off of the you know, tab there, and we'll take a look at that one next to it. The spring that comes with this kickstand should also be a perfect fit because it's a match for this foot peg bracket. The 8 inch is a little bit stockier and it has this nice kick on it so it makes it a little bit easier to find when you're putting it down. Oh well. We're going to have a higher tension spring and the bike won't be leaning over. So, this is going to be completely worth it. I just loop my spring up and over. Just like so. And now, I'm lining up the holes. That way, I can thread the bolt through. I'm not going to use the short one. I'm going to use the long one that came with, I don't know, I think it was the factory kickstand that was on this bike, I think. Kind of lost track now. I'm sure I can find a nut for that bolt. One of the tabs on the kickstand is threaded, so technically you really don't need one. I think that's why the new bolt that they give you is shorter so that it doesn't have the excess sticking out the end i don't mind the excess because if we do put a nut on there it'll lock up against those threads 
that way it can't back out ever. We could play it safe and just use a couple bolts to mount this up and get a test fit, but as usual, I'm feeling pretty confident, so I'm going to go ahead and send it with some blue thread locker gel. All four. The reason I'm using the thread locker on these bolts is because they're straight into the block and we don't want to over tighten anything and strip it out or crack it. Uh, it almost touches the ground, even leaning up against the workbench. Let me clean up my mess on the floor and we'll see how it turned out. It stands up absolutely perfectly. However, I now see why the shorter kickstand bolt is included. If the threads go through on the bolt, they can catch the spring when you try to fold it up. So, I'm going to have to swap that out. Oops. Didn't see that coming. I just lean the bike up again on the workbench. That way the weight is off the kickstand. It's still extended. I'm removing the long bolt. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the short one. I believe it's going to be a different size socket. This one was a 5 8. Yep. Let me grab the right one. Actually, yeah, that doesn't fit. I don't have to go overly tight here. Just want to make sure that we're threaded all the way in and then some that turned out to be a 15 millimeter that'll do we definitely have positive placement up and down. Now we have to remove the front fender. I think I only have three of the bolts actually holding it on. They're really hard to see because currently the fender only sits about an inch off the tire. Talk about getting lucky. I'm using this little 10 millimeter wrench to remove these bolts. They're up here behind the lower portion of the shock. This one was so tight backing out up against that tire I thought I almost had to remove the wheel. I did get it though. I'm gonna remove this. A bit of a tight squeeze. Let's remove one hand. Alright. And I do believe for aesthetic purposes. We're going to be cutting the old tabs off. 
I might not actually have to cut anything. These tabs are just tack welded to the fenders. I have a pair of pliers, a flat screwdriver, and a hammer to work with. So far, I just bent it down and a good portion of the weld has already released. I'm going to give it a few wraps with the hammer and if that doesn't work, I'll chisel it up with a screwdriver. I got it off there. It took a little bit of effort. Plus another screwdriver of the big and ugly variety. Next, we're going to need the directions. That's right. For once, somebody else already figured it out for us. I went ahead and ordered a spacer kit off of eBay. This comes from a Mr. Luke Hallquist. I'll leave a link in the description. Looks like we have to drill a couple holes in the fender. Align mount with these cutouts. Okay, you have two mounts. The top mount and the bottom mount. We have to figure out where this is going to go up here and then mark out the holes. Nail polish got me out of that bind. None of my markers or pencil could reach down inside of the spacer and adhere to the surface. Sir Mark's a lot got it, but only after I roughed it out with a little bit of nail polish. I found the centers and marked those. This CNC spacer has a little notch cut in it that goes towards the rear. We know the rear of the fender has that little plastic extension. So I lined the spacer up with the centers and then I tried to center the spacer itself on the fender. Once I did that, I just gave it a dabble, dabble, dabble. You could barely see where the holes would be. So, we got in there and put a more permanent mark on the surface. That'll all come off with lacquer thinner. These have to get drilled out now. I have my holes drilled out and my bolts with my washers going through the bottom piece of, I guess we could call it an adapter, fender adapter. We're going to be sandwiching the fender in between and that notch is going towards the rear. So, it'll be like that, with the fender between it. This would be the front. I'm just going to put it together. Just like that. These two bolts are going to get threaded into these two holes here that seems to be holding on to 
the bottom of my light frame you see how they pass through okay so hopefully those will be replacing them once I take those out and send these home here I am all tightened up and look at that there's my bolts happily coming through Mr. Luke, you, sir, are a genius. It sits perfectly between the tubes, or as close to perfect as it needs to be. It sits really, really level. This is awesome. I'm glad I went this route. From the front, even with the handlebars turned straight, we have a nice subtle lean now. We can turn the handlebars to the left or the right, no matter what. The bike is a whole lot more stable than it was before. When you're installing this fender relocation kit, you can try a few different angles on the dangle. Personally, I like this nice, classic, playful look that we've achieved. The fender has those notcherinos that line up with the fork tubes. If you try to pull it forward to angle the front down to match the rear, then you start to see those more and it doesn't look factory at all. It also starts to throw off the mud guard, which actually does a very good job at keeping debris off the engine as long as it's in the right place. I have so much to do and so many projects to catch up on. We still have the live axle for the CT100 and more upgrades for the BT200X. But I still want to show you this parts bike I picked up before it has even less parts on it. Believe it or not, this is a runner. Or at least it was. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Oh,